so excited. I told Angela that um, one time I was working a deal and I was the listing agent. Mm -hmm. And the agent was like, oh, I'll send you the pre-call letter right now. I can automatically generate it. And I was so jealous. <laughs> I was like, what? And I was just waiting for somebody to have that. Yeah, what I like about it as well is the borrowers, they could just upload all their documents into that website as well. And then it's going to tell you guys, is the borrower pending anything or have they sent yeah. this through? So pretty cool. Okay. Like it. Um, we're going to start letting you. And you're, you can no no rush because we're going to give them a few minutes to jump on mm -hmm. like I kind of just talked to them for a little bit while so, everybody jumps on I do need you to go to your email real quick okay I'll, I'll do that while we're letting them Sweet. in good morning ladies good morning Lorena good morning how you doing good good thank you How's your week been so far? Good, thank you. Que bueno. Uh, we're gonna give everybody a couple of minutes to jump on. We have some very special guests today. So I'm super excited to show you guys um, what they have for us. And then we will jump into the training right after, okay? Yes, thank you. It's about a uh, link we already received. Yes, right? you should have received a link already. And they're going to give us more of a, they're going to give us kind of the rundown on how to use it. Okay. Thank Did you send it already? Yeah, I might have ah, sent it. Okay. Uh, click on both links. on my laptop that's why it's kind of <laughs> sticky on one side no it's because mine my keyboard is a lot smaller that's why so i'm like oh let me just check my password real quick that's gonna bother me until i get a new one I know, for real. <laughs> that's why mine is at the office yeah. the thing is that i don't drink soda and the one day that it i happens. had a cup in my hand <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's see if there's anybody else in Zoom. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Okay, time 10.06. Michelle and Anvaro. All right. Good morning, everyone. How's your week been? Morning. Before we get started, while we're waiting for everybody to jump on, um, I have a property coming soon in 79932 area. Three bed, two bath. Um, I'll be putting out some more information on it today, but if you guys have any buyers in that area, it's going to probably be somewhere between, I'm thinking 180 to 200. Um, we have a very motivated seller. So we're finalizing numbers today, getting the listing agreement today and bedrooms? posting it today. How many bedrooms? Three, three bed, two bath. So I'll give you guys some more information on that, but just heads up, um, our seller is super duper motivated. So please look out on WhatsApp. I'll be posting it a little bit later, okay? Thank you. Anybody else have anything that they wanna share while we wait for everybody else to jump on? No? Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in then. So today we have Mr. Gilbert from Home Plate Mortgage. Hello. We also have Miss Angela. She's sitting right around the corner. Oh, she's, yeah, you guys can see her. <laughs> so she's here also. 
Um, they did something super special for us. So for everybody that RSVP'd for the training, you should have already received an email with a link. That link is gonna give you access into um, like a, a portal or a system um, that's new to their team. And it's an awesome resource for both of us to use with our clients. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Gilbert and he's gonna give you guys a quick explanation of how to use it and how this can help benefit your business, okay? Do you need to share the screen? Um, yes, please. Okay, well, I'll let you talk and then let me know once you're ready, I'll share okay. your screen. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, first off, I just wanted to kind of go over what our company does. Um, we do have a special setup with Denise. So what we're doing is we do waive our origination fee and we waive our underwriting fee on all files that you send to us. So definitely right now, um, there's a lot of actual sellers that are not willing to pay closing costs. So this is definitely gonna help you guys out because our closing costs obviously are gonna be very low without that 1% origination fee. And just to give you an example, let's say you have a property for uh, 200,000, that origination fee would be $2,000 that we'd be waiving for your borrowers. And then we also have an 895 underwriting fee that we're waiving as well. And um, we're doing exclusive uh, for you guys because you guys are giving us the opportunity to work with you. Um, Angela, I have her here with us as well. Angela will be your point of contact. I jump in just to verify and make sure all your leads are taken care of. Our goal is when you send us a lead, we do have to make contact with that lead within, the, within five to 10 minutes. Um, if Angela can't jump on it, I jump on it. If I can't jump on it, we have Jacqueline and we have Cynthia that are at the actual office right now. So um, your leads are always gonna be taken care of. So definitely we're gonna waive that origination fee and we're gonna waive the underwriting fee on all your clients. So with that being said, I'm gonna share the screen or we're gonna share the screen and I'm gonna jump into the system that we're gonna be using. Yeah. yeah. So um, this right here is actually going to be your portal. And what this portal is going to do. So what this portal is going to do is this is going to be customized um, to you guys as real estate agents. So if you notice, I'm going to be on the top. Um, there is a cool little mortgage calculator here as well. So if you do have clients that want to figure out what their estimated mortgage payment's going to be, or even if you as a real estate agent want to jump in and look at that, you'll have access to that. Um, I don't know where I found this picture, pretty funny, <laughs> but uh, Realtor Test, this is our test realtor. Um, this is actually where your profile picture is going to go and all your personal information is going to be here. So Angela reached out to you with the link. You can actually go in there and edit your information. The only thing you're not allowed to do is upload your pictures. So if you can get Angela your pictures, she'll get that going for you. This is your URL up here. So if you notice my test one has my name on it, yours would be customized to whatever you want. It could be your name or if you have a team or you know wh whatever you like, we can actually update this URL right here to show um, you know, wh whatever you want it to show. So then what you're gonna do is you would go in, log into your portal on mine, on mine, I have my personal email. So you're just going to come in here. And again, if you guys get stuck stuck on any, any of this, Angela will jump in and she's going to walk you through all of this stuff. So when you log in, it's going to ask you your role. So your role obviously is going to be a real estate agent, set role. And then when you come in here, this is gonna actually, be, and if you notice, I created a couple of test uh, ones before we logged in, but right here is gonna be your pipeline. It's gonna have everything that you've ever sent to us. And then what, what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be able to log in. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the latest one I did. Was it actually, yeah, it was this one right here. So these are your actual, think of these as your actual borrowers right here. This is actually a true borrower down here. But when you click on it, this is going to let you know where we're at on the process. So up here, we're going to actually let you know, hey, application was done on this date. Pre-qualification was done on this date. Pre-approval. Pre-approval means we actually have the documents. Everything's in line at that point. Contract received. Appraisal ordered. 
appraisals are received, submitted to underwriting, in underwriting, approved, received. Um, this is when the conditions are actually back from the client. Uh, when we have our famous clear to close, you get the email. And um, this is showing that docs are out and docs are received and loan funded, which is pretty much where we all want to be right there. Payday. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to actually allow you to keep track of what we're doing on this section right here. If the actual borrower wants to share this with you, this will tell you what the borrower is actually pending. And what I mean by pending is we're going to ask them for pay stubs. We're going to ask them for bank statements. We're going to ask them for W-2s, you know, all the necessary documents in order to get them pre-qualified for the loan. So right here is going to show you what they're actually pending for us. Right here is going to tell you what they submitted, but what we're pending to actually clear. And then when docs are accepted, we come in here. Right now it's not going to show you because um, the way I have this borrower is they're not sharing the information with you. So docs receive, so it'll tell you, hey, I received a pay stub, I received the bank statement, so on and so forth. So this is gonna allow you to go in there and see what's actually pending and what's actually been received. So this is, you know, this is an awesome portal to keep track of everything. Our famous um, setup right here is gonna be what they call a pre-approval letter. So what this is gonna do is when we have your client pre-approved, we're gonna let you know, hey, this bar is pre-approved for 300,000. So, uh, I mean, I love that number. I don't know why I say 300,000. <laughs> so when you actually click pre-approval letter, you're gonna actually be able to come in here and this is a pre-approval letter that you're gonna be able to generate. So right here, let's say you're trying to do a pre-approval letter for, let's say they're only going for 250. So right here, you're gonna put the 250,000 in there. Your address, you can definitely, put an address if you want in there. I usually use uh, 123 TBD, but if you guys want to actually generate an address, that's up to you. Right here is what they call, great. <laughs> Let's start all over again. <laughs> so 220, 123. Actually, I'm just gonna use one that's populating right here. Um, right here where it says actual down payment. So what you wanna do is I already have these fields, um, where can I move this? <laughs> I already have these fields set up right here. So if their actual sales price is 220,000, your actual down payment is gonna be right here. So your minimum down payment for 220 is gonna be 6,600. And on this particular file, if you notice down here, it's set up as an FHA purchase 30 year. So we were doing conventional, your minimum down payment would be 3%. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is this gonna automatically populate, um, the, the bottom portion is automatically gonna populate with the type of loan that they've been pre-qualified for? Okay. Yes, so what we do on our end is before we give you access to generate a pre-approval, we're gonna be thorough on our end and make sure they pre-qualify. So if you notice right here, I have maximum sales price and you'll be able to know Okay, what's this borrower's max? So right here, I have maximum, actually I, I have it at 500,000. So what that means right here is this number, you can go all the way up to 500,000. If you try to do 501 or 502, you're gonna get an error right here saying that it must be within the maximum sales price. So we're telling you right here, if you wanna come to the bottom, this is the maximum they're gonna be approved for. So again, let's say we go with 205. This is gonna tell you, well, the minimum payment, and again, this is what we generated on our end, is gonna be 6150. Because two uh three and a half percent of 205 is gonna, well, I don't know, I pointed it, is gonna be at the 6150. So then we're gonna put that number in there. This right here, um, seller pay closing costs, don't touch it. Um, other states, they do have to actually disclose what the seller's paying in closing costs. So we don't need that. And that's pretty much it. After you fill that information out, you're just gonna go down here to make pre-approval letter. And then it's gonna come out right here. If you notice, I did one last night, just getting ready. But right here, it says that your pre-approval letters. And the cool part is when we do a pre-approval letter, you're gonna get an email and you're actually gonna get a text message saying a pre-approval letter was generated. So if you click the eyeball here, 
the eyeball is going to show you our actual pre-approval letter. So this is the actual pre-approval letter. So this is the actual client's name. This is the address we popped in, sales price, loan amount. Actually, this one was a, a conventional loan. So if you notice right there, it says net 97%. So yeah, I, that's an error on my end. That would actually say conventional purchase 30 year with the 97%, which is a 3% 3 down. And it has all this other information down here, no contingency and the rate is at market. Um, obviously if we have a rate, we're gonna put the rate in right there. So that that's the way the actual letter is gonna look. And then what you're gonna do is right here, this is the actual upload button. So what you're going to do is you're going to click that little button and right here, it's going to generate this as a PDF. So when you go in as a PDF, this is how you're going to save it. So you can either right click save as, or you can actually come over here and download it to wherever you want. And that's your pre-approval letter. So quick and easy process. Gilbert. Yes, ma'am. Uh, a question. What do you need to, to have in order to we have the approval pre-approval letter. So what we do is we do a thorough um, pre-qualification with the client. So what we're going to do is we'll pre-screen the client. We're going to go over, um, you know, what they make per year, uh, DTI, debt ratio. Um, so we do a full thorough pre-approval letter, uh, pre-qualification. Okay. Pre and so you, when we you need to have all, all uh, their information, uh, income taxes, uh, pay stubs. Uh, I don't necessarily need all those documents. The key component that I need is just to run their credit and to okay. know more or less how much um, you know their, their income is. So with running credit and knowing their income, I can allow you to do a pre-qualification pre letter. The okay. pre-approval letter, yes, ma'am, I do need them to send in all their documents. Okay. But when I give you access to generate a pre-approval letter, that means I've done everything on my end. Because that pre-approval letter, that's pretty much my word telling you that this borrower is solid and is going to close. We will not give you access to a pre-qualification letter unless it's a solid borrower. So again, that, that letter is, I mean, it's gold. It's pretty much telling you my company's done everything in our end to let you know that this is actually a qualified buyer that will close. So okay. yes, that's, very that's awesome to have this this um, this uh, thing is awesome cool. because when we when we need to a, a pre approval pre qualification letter during a weekend we can we can do it ourselves. One one more question: Do you have a an online application to start the process? Yes, ma'am. So that's actually. Um, <clears throat> Let me go back to your email. Is it this mm -hmm. one? Because when I clicked in it, it overread it. So what's going to happen is, do you remember that picture I sent you, that little funny picture with that realtor, the test realtor? That's the actual online application right there. But it's going to be co-branded with your info. So the actual online application is going to look... Let's see, I got to log myself out. I think, yeah. And bear with me, I'm learning this system <laughs> as we go as You'll, well. You, you will, to answer your question, Ethel, you will have a different link and that's gonna be the online application. So you'll give that to the client. This is, you guys, this is such an amazing tool, like hands down, such an amazing tool because what they're giving you for free is a CRM system, okay? Now you have access to look and see, okay, of all the clients that I've sent out for applications, even just sent them for an application. Here's where they're at, here's their status, here's where they're at in the process. It's a very easy portal for you to keep track of your clients, okay? It keeps the flow of communication going so we don't have to blow up their phone every five minutes trying to figure out where our client is. We can log in. And we can go and see, okay, this is what I'm getting. This is what I'm seeing. You can call your client directly now and say, hey, I see that they're still missing a couple of documents from you. 
Um, we're going to go out and look at properties this weekend. And remember, the market's super aggressive right now. So I need access to pull your, your, your pre-qualification letter. In order to do that, I'm going to need for you to get Angela and Gilbert these documents before Friday. It, it, it helps all of us work together 10 times better. Okay. And then Norma has a question. Hey, Norma. I have a question. So if we have a client and they haven't been pre-approved. So we send them to you guys, but do we give them this um, link and they can apply there? Or do they have to contact you first? Or- I, Honestly, I, I still prefer them to contact us first. Okay. So what, what I'm doing right now is I'm allowing, well, not allowing, sorry, let me rephrase that. I suggest and I recommend that you have them call us and what we okay. do is we're going to go through the whole pre-qualification process with them on the phone. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send them out that actual link to go in there and do their application. Or at the same wow. time, if you want to get ahead of it, Norma, what you can do is you can say, look, I'm going to send you our personal link for the application, but you go ahead and speak to speak to them first before you actually okay. physically go in there and get that done. Um, a lot of times, um, and again, I just made this live this past week. So a lot of realtors, what they're doing is they're sending them the link that borrower is actually getting started on the link and then it triggers us to give them a call. So it just depends on how you personally want to go about it. I still love speaking to them first. I, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm going to jump in. I think it also depends on your client, Norma. Remember, we talk about the personality types. Some yeah. personality types prefer that phone call first. And That's even true. though they still need to speak to them, there are certain personality types that are like, go, go, go. Where do I apply? Send me the link. Super tech savvy. And yeah. in that case, obviously, they still want to contact them. But you kind of have to see what it is, gauge what's what going to work like. best for them. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Okay. Yeah. And what Thank we'll you. do, what we'll do as well, Norma, um, Angela and I will put you on a group text message. That way you can kind of give us a heads up as well and just say, Hey, um, I gave your information to this borrower. Do you mind calling them? Or, Hey, this borrower is actually going to be calling you. That way we have a heads up and we know that that borrower is actually coming through. So okay. yeah, definitely. And, and you're buying a house, you're not buying a car. I want it to be personal. Mm -hmm. So That's trust important. me, I'm not sending, I'm not just grabbing your client Hey, go to the link and I'll deal with you guys later. No, I, I, we build that personal one-on-one -on -one with that borrower. Mm -hmm. But um, like Denise said, there's, there's borrowers that just, they want to do it now. So it's like, here's the link, get a head start on everything. Um, okay. I what is your, your minimum credit score? My minimum credit score right now is 620. 620. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> if you guys can see the screen, this is, this is actually the link that, you guys are gonna have, if you notice right here, it says apply now. So this is actually where the borrower would go to apply now. And then this is where we're gonna co-brand it uh, with your headshot, with your personal information right here. That way, when you're giving this borrower the link, it's actually your personal link. See right here where it says my name, this is actually gonna have your guys' name on there. So it's gonna be customized straight to you guys. Um, I mean, it's co-branded, obviously, but that way, when that lead comes through, it's going to come through with your name on there. And I could see it. Okay, it came from you. Let's give you a call. Let's let you know where the borrowers are at. And we're very, very hands-on with walking you through the process. Um, we provide ourselves in customer service. Um, we need to call you. We need to let you know what's going on with the borrower, where it's at. Same thing with the borrower. They're going to know everything that's going on with their file. Um, to be honest with you, that that's our main goal is to make sure that it's personal. And, you know, I said it before, you're, you're buying a house, you need that attention, you need that education. And that's one thing that we're going to strive for is make sure that they're educated and they know what's going on with the home buying process. Does anybody have any other questions? Did everybody receive the link? All of you should have received an email link. Yes? Yes. <laughs> Michelle lo recibió, yo no. <laughs> no? Okay, so we'll get you guys one. Alberto, did you get one? Yeah, I got one. I, okay. I have a quick question. Um, uh -huh. How much does this service cost? Free. Free? 
Free of charge, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to be, build value to you guys as real estate agents. And this actually helps us as well as it helps you. So, yeah, I mean, all our services that we do are free. Um, we just got a lot of things that we like doing uh, to help our realtors out. So, yeah, there, there's no charge for this. So, one of the things that we talk about, Alberto is actually very new. He just passed his test this past week. Congratulations. Nice. Awesome. Congratulations. Again. <laughs> uh, so, one of the things that we talk about a lot, Alberto, is um, building your team and your lenders are going to be part of your team and your lenders being part of your team it's not just about getting a client and throwing them to whatever lender el que caiga you know like your your lenders are your partners and there's certain value that you that they bring to you um and this this tool right here, this resource, this is something that not every lender has. This is something that they have to pay for out of pocket for their business. And then they offer it to us. And then the, on the plus side, it's co-branded. That's super cool because that makes us look a lot more reputable. Um, it like makes us look a lot more professional. It has our information on there. So you know that when you send the client to the lender, they're going to come back to you when they're ready because not all clients come back to you ready instantly. Not all clients qualify instantly. Some of them are going to take a few months. Some of them are going to need a little bit of coaching on their credit or pay this down first. And you want to make sure that if you send your client to somebody, whether it's credit repair, a lender, a contractor, whoever you're sending them to, that they're going to come back to you when they're ready for your business. And so this is really a win-win um, situation here. And just this is just such an awesome tool. Like I, I can't get over how tool that, how cool this tool is. Um, so please give it an, give it a chance. You guys are going to go out this weekend. I know some of you guys are doing open houses. Some of you guys are doing showings. Everybody's been prospecting hard this week. Give it an opportunity. Um, not everybody offers you this. Give Home Plate an opportunity to work with your client. I guarantee you, you guys are going to be very happy. Um, and, and if you guys have any questions, I'll let you, I guess, yeah, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Angela give you guys a call later on today, if not tomorrow, and she'll thoroughly answer your questions. She'll walk you through the system one more time. Um, utilize Angela; she's awesome. Um, she's been with me over two years now. Um, I would not have her here if she was not um, on top of her game. So she does know how to pre-qualify clients. She knows our system. She knows our products. Um, obviously, I'm still gonna be in the background jumping in helping her out, um, but she's gonna be the one building the rapport with you guys. If you wanna reach out to me personally, by all means, we'll set up a conference call, another Zoom meeting, and we'll walk you through everything. But yeah, definitely we're gonna waive all our fees for you. Um, we're gonna do everything we can to, to get your borrowers closed. And yeah, we, I mean, we look forward to helping you guys out, definitely. Gilbert, I mean, yeah, Gilbert. Yes, sir. Um, so we have to create a password or yes. So what you're going to do is you're actually, when you're going to, let me see if I could show you right here. You're going to go to login and you're going to go to forgot password. Oh, so okay. If you uh -huh. forgot password, that's going to actually ask you for your email address. Uh, I see. So mm -hmm. when you put in your email address, that's going to actually allow you to, to start your, your email, um, your password and get into your portal and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. The only cool. thing you need to get to us is, is going to be your actual, um, headshot or your logo or whatever you want the picture to be when it's co-branded. That, that's the only thing you want to have access to. So okay. awesome. we have to send the, uh, send you the uh, our pictures with yes. logo. Yes, okay. ma'am. Send us a picture. Um, some people are doing logos, but if you have your picture, I I highly recommend a picture. No forgot password. Okay. Yeah. Only. And, the but Angela will, Angela will be calling you today, today, later today, just to go over all that with you. And then she'll share your link again. We'll make sure that you like it. It's good. And then from there, you, you can go live with it. Okay, thank you. And Gilbert, um, for uh, Spanish speakers, people? Yes, sir. Hablan español, todo bien. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be completely honest with you. My Spanish isn't the greatest, but I do have Jacqueline. Jacqueline's yeah. been with my company for a year and a half. So what okay. I can do is I can have her personally reach out to you as well. She is actually, her and Cynthia are in the office right now. So I have a team of four and we're, we're always 
making sure that your clients are handled and closings are closing on time. So that's why they're Perfect. not with us right now. But yes, sir, I'll personally have Jacqueline reach out to you. But yeah, I apologize. My my Spanish is not the greatest, sir. Oh, no, no. That's, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions, guys? Well, I appreciate you guys. Um, again, we're going to have Angela give you a call and thank you for your time. And we definitely look forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Um, you guys have the link already. Most of you have the link, Michelle and Alvaro, they're working on yours. Um, get a head start on sending that headshot. Don't wait for Angela to call you. Send her a headshot. Most of you guys have really nice headshots already. Just reply to that email that she sent you. Um, and then she'll reach out later and just answer any additional questions. But how cool is this? This is so cool, isn't it? I'm super excited to try it, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. <laughs> um, thank you. Well, I'll give you guys a call once I'm done with the training. Thank awesome. you so much. Um, all right. So I'm super excited about this tool. Let's, um, I'm actually going to, gonna talk to you guys just a little bit longer before we before I share my screen with you let me log off of this thing hang on who's that with Marcos what about him oh okay yeah um he won't be in we'll probably see him we'll see him soon yeah thank you all right um so i want to know what you guys got out of that just that tool alone how do you guys think that you can benefit out of that i'm taking this thing off i think it's great Isn't i think it? yeah it is it, it's great just to to know where we are in the process and uh, to be able to have the pre-qualification letters for every transaction or every uh, contract we need to to submit i think that it's like we can do it alone we don't need to bother anybody we don't need to to wait for anybody to answer mm -hmm. and i always say you guys um i bring certain preferred partners of mine in here um, because I've already tried them. They're already tried and true. Um, I've already tried them out for you. I, I'm not going to bring anybody to the table that is going to do you wrong. Um, these guys are so hardworking. They're local. They give us all sorts of incentives. You heard them say they waive the origination fee and they waive the, what is it, the processing fee. Their rates are really, really good. Um, the writing, I think. The underwriting yeah. fees. So they have really good rates. Um, communication, again, this is how you find your, your partners. You know what I mean? Like, go out and find a couple of partners. Go out and find a couple of lenders. Like, you don't have to only have one. Um, I recommend that you have at least two of everything just in case. But these are the types of things that your lenders or your partners should be bringing to the table. Remember, it's not just let me send you all my clients and they do nothing for you. It's a true partnership. It really is a true partnership. So the fact that you're going to get co-branded, the fact that you're going to have access to a CRM system, essentially, you're, you're, they're essentially giving you a customer relationship management portal. Those things can, they go from $100 to, I've seen upwards of like $3,000. So that's a, that's a very pricey system that they're allowing you to have to help track your, your clients. And then last but not least, right now we need every little extra edge that we can get. The fact that you guys can create a pre-qualification letter within a minute means that when you're out over the weekend and you're trying to figure out how do I make myself be known, you're not waiting around for a pre-qualification letter. You're not sending an offer and then I'll send you the pre-qualification letter in the morning. Like, no, you're in go, go, go mode. Hey, what do you need? I got you. This is it. And, and vamonos. So please give them a shot, guys. Um, they're, they really are good to work with. I'm going to share my screen. Batia, ojalá y sea falso porque la verdad no he visto nada diferente acá en el paso. De hecho, todavía hay luz, todavía hay agua. No sé si has visto que. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> how you know what that's a good topic how's everybody doing while i pull up this uh this next screen for you how's everybody doing um con este frio everybody have water electricity see okay please don't hesitate to let us know if you guys need anything Ay, i'm trying to minimize this thing but no me deja Okay, give me a minute to um, just to pull up the new screen that I need. How's everybody's prospecting going? I want to hear how y'all's prospect is going. I'm, I'm very curious to hear um, because on Monday we talked about how everybody was going to do some more prospecting. We talked about um, how everybody was committing <laughs> committing to getting out there and making those phone calls. And I'd love to hear what you guys have going on while I pull up this new screen. Don't all talk at once. <laughs> um, well, in my experience, um, which I have no experience at all, I had uh, another realtor from California contact me and give me a referral. Well, I mean, nice. she gave me a lead. Um, she texted me and she's asking 25% of the commission. Oh, that's good. That's a, that's a good amount. That's, that's more or less the going rate. It's typically going to be about 25 to 30. So that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good uh, amount that she's requesting. Okay. Uh, one, one question, is that company or is a realtor? Because I just received um, a call uh, from someone, but it's a, like a company that they, they send referrals or leads and uh, they take, I think, 20%, but it's a company, so I, I don't know. No, this is a... a this was just a an agent an independent agent and um when the um, realty one uploaded my picture uh my family shared it and stuff and they just commented there and there was like oh i'm looking for a agent in el paso um can he help me out and my dad was like yeah um let me give you my information and he did and she texted me and she's like um i'm not really sure how um commissions the commission split works in Texas, but she was, it's usually 25%. Um, I didn't know, I wasn't sure. So I just texted her back and I was like, let me speak to my broker first um, and I'll get back to you. And yeah, she said it was fine. So I'm gonna call Oscar and see what he thinks about it and go from there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Alberto. Well, we can definitely help you with all of that. Um, I know, I talked to Sierra yesterday and she said that you were interested in the mentorship program. So I'll give you a call after we're done with this training and I'll kind of walk you through what all we need to do next. But I mean, that really goes to show you guys how social media and ask your family to share. I don't know if you asked your family to share or if they just kind of did it on their own, but ask your family and ask your friends to share, especially when we're in that position of like, okay, you know, sometimes we go, we we're in a slump or sometimes we're like, ah, you know, for whatever reason, something isn't working or ask your, ask your friends and family to share, um, to share your, your content, to share your posts, because that was, that's almost way too easy of a lead that he just got. Do you know if it's a buyer or a seller by any chance? I'm reading the text right now and it's a buyer. It's a buyer. Um, okay. So this realtor, her name is Gloria Irigoyen Martinez. It's one of my, my dad's a dentist. So it's one of her, one of his clients, mm -hmm. um, but she's from California. So she texted me. She's like, I have a nephew in El Paso that has been wanting to purchase uh, for a while, but he doesn't have a realtor yet. Um, and so I told her, yeah. I, and then I didn't know she was a realtor as well until she told me, she's like, I'm not sure how referrals work in Texas, but usually I would get a 25% referral fee. Please let me know if that works for you. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to accept because uh, I didn't know if, if it was too much or too little. So I wanted to speak with Oscar first and then. Always her. accept. Always <laughs> accept the lead. <laughs> yeah. 
that's that's a pretty that's usually the going rate uh 25 to 30 i she asked you for i mean that's that's reasonable yeah that's reasonable okay and something that i learned i i don't know if it is like that but it's reasonable if it's reasonable for you because it's it's your money and it's not easy to have leads so i think it's great if you need to pay 30 percent and you're new so if it's fine for you, I think you need to go ahead and take it. Well, yeah. Fine. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys now. And we will jump into today's training is on today's training is on open houses. Um, so we won't we won't go past the 11 o'clock today um we're gonna touch on open houses how to hold a successful open house so covid has been going on for over a year now um things are starting to come a little back to normal um our new normal our new normal is what we have our face masks we know to wash our hands we know to have our hand sanitizers we know that we can't be you know congregating with too many people um and so you guys are starting to see more and more open houses open houses is a great way for you to generate leads at a very very low cost okay um i think I think most of you guys, I've been over open houses, um, the training with you. So we're, we're going to kind of run through it. But what's the main goal for an open house? Why, why would you do an open house? Get new clients? To get new clients. It really is to get new clients. So if you have a listing, if you are representing a seller, you want to host an open house because you obviously want to give that home exposure. When you host an open house, you have the opportunity to have more exposure um, for that listing because now you're promoting the open house. As a buyer's agent, you also have the opportunity to have more clients. So there's a reason that I always tell you guys to get more listings, get more listings or focus on listings. And the reason is because for every listing client that you have, you should be getting at least one other buyer client. So it's like a two for one. And the reason that this happens is because when you're representing the seller, you promote that listing like, like it's your listing. So think about it. If you were to promote somebody else's listing like it was your listing, you should be getting another buyer. Um, psychologically it just works better for us when that's at our actual listing and that that's you know that's our actual client but if you can get into the habit of especially you guys that are a little new or don't have any listings right now um get into the habit of promoting a listing as if it was your own promote the open house as if it was your own you should be getting some clients off of it some buyer clients um, so we're going to be reviewing, obviously, the purpose of an open house, how to select homes to, op uh, to hold the open for, how to prepare and increase your attendance and staging and setting up your office for the day. Okay. Um, so we're going to, this is everything that we're going to go over. Um, first, let's start with our affirmation for the day. This is a pretty good affirmation. This is something that we have talked about, um, and essentially, we always talk about make sure that you're being professional in every way. So I am professional in every way that I, in every way that I dress. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Every way. In <laughs> I'm like manner, mm -hmm. knowledge, and um, in every way that I dress, the manner, the knowledge, and action. Okay, so everyone, take yourself off of mute for a minute. I know it's a little off. Let's say. I am I am professional in every way that I dress, manner, knowledge, and action. Sorry, little typo. <laughs> All right, on the count of three, one, two, three. I am professional in every way, manner, knowledge, and action. I am professional in every way that I dress, manner, knowledge, and action. Okay, this is huge. Um, 
we've had a training on the way that we dress. So we're going to go into uh -huh. open houses. Um, we're, we're about to go into open houses and definitely the way that you dress has an impression on your clients. So as part of your preparation, make sure that you're taking the time to figure out what is an adequate um, uniform for yourself that day. I think for those of you that might, might have a hard time figuring out like what's adequate for me to wear and what's not, stop thinking of it as like, what do I wear? And just think about it as a uniform. My uniform as a realtor has changed multiple times throughout the years. Um, it's changed based off based off how much money I had to spend on clothes. Um, it's changed based off what type of clients I was serving, what type of appointments I'm going to, um, what type of property I'm going to, what type of event I'm hosting. So you all can catch me still in a t-shirt. Um, I've had t-shirts made with my logo on it. Um, polos with my with my logo on it. If that's if that's more comfortable for you, a polo is still very professional if you're dressing it up correctly. Okay, so you can do polos. You can even do t-shirts um, whenever it's adequate. If you're at an open house, take into consideration the type of property and what you're going to be walking into while you're at that property. So, for example. Um, if I'm going to take my clients to look at uh, new builds, then I know that I'm going to be walking on a lot of lots. I try to remember to wear flats um, because if I don't, I don't feel comfortable walking on the loose sand with my heels. I think Michelle and Alvaro had a chance to see that one time. I forgot my shoes and I was like, there's no way that I'm about to go over there because I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall. Like I, I'm not gonna make it over there. So um, ladies, I just recommend that you keep a pair of flats in your in your car. Um, I'm huge, I'm, I'm just a big heel wearer. So I usually just keep the flats in my car. That's just easier for me. Um, but there's days also, like if I'm gonna go look at a fix and flip that's coming up, I wear tennis shoes. You know, I just take all of that into consideration. This is all part of your, your preparation, okay? Preparation and presentation. Remember, we only have one opportunity to make a first impression. In our manners also, Always, always use your manners. Always please and thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You know, um, chew with your mouth closed. Like all of that good stuff. Like everything that we learned in third grade, remember that stuff and remember that it's going to make an impression. Um, and then, you know, as you start to feel out your client, you get to start to know like how relaxed can I be with them or or how, how, how up, I don't want to say uptight, but how much on my P's and Q's do I have to be? Because there's some clients, they don't want me to be super manner and yes, ma'am, yes, sir. They want me to be like, you know, like a compa, you know, like that's, that's really, that's really the feel that they want. And, and that's part of us learning the personality types, right? And you have to be able to, to transition. I know it's funny, but it's, it's so true. Um, so learning how to do that now, your knowledge and your action. So knowledge, the fact that you guys are in this training right now is huge. Just maintaining that knowledge, watch podcasts, uh, or listen to podcasts in the morning. There's some great teachers out there. Um, I know very little in comparison to a lot of these other great teachers. Um, like Tom Ferry is one of my favorite teachers to listen to. Um, I know Anaïs has been following him a lot and she's always posting about him. He's a great real estate teacher. Um, Ryan Sherhan, he's also a great teacher and he puts out good information. Um, and then there's, there's plenty other, but just always keep the flow of information moving always keep the flow of information moving. If what you're trying to master is real estate, make sure that the time that you have to, to absorb information is being used on that. So for example, <clears throat> um, if you're in the car, 
use that time to listen to audiobooks or to listen to podcasts that are going to help you sharpen your skill. It's very easy to turn on a podcast and listen to it while you're driving from one appointment to another or on your way to pick up the kids from school. Um, this, is, this is time that we want to just be as efficient as possible. Now, I will say this. <clears throat> um, you'll go through your cycles. You're gonna go through your cycles. Your brain is like a sponge, right? So your brain's here and it can absorb and absorb and absorb and absorb and absorb. But at a certain point, it's full. If you ever feel like, I can't listen to another podcast, I can't listen to, an, I can't watch another YouTube video, I can't listen to another audiobook, like nothing is going through, nothing is sticking, there's a reason. You have to take a minute to decompress a little bit. This is when it's important for you guys to know and understand yourself and take the time that you need to maybe listen to some relaxing music, maybe meditate. It, it just means that you're, you're, over full, you're overfilled and there's too much noise in there, okay? So it's, it's just as important for you guys to focus on the knowledge as it is for you to learn yourself and know when you've gotten to the point of like, I just need to, to decompress. And that's why I'm so big on you guys taking some time on Sunday, maybe not all day on Sunday, because I know some of us are still working on Sunday, but take a little bit of time on Sunday to decompress, to be without your phone, to go for a walk, to meditate, pray, whatever it is that works for you. And then action. We can look good. We can have the best manners and we can know everything that we need to know about real estate excuse me, but if we're not taking the right action, if we're not making the phone calls, if we're not actually going to the open houses and hosting these open houses, if we are not prospecting, if we're not submitting offers, nothing's gonna happen. And at the end of the day, we are here to make money. This isn't a hobby. This isn't something that we only do for fun. We are here to make money. We are here to close deals. And the only way that we're going to make money is if we close deals. So we have to take action. So that's why I'm always pushing you guys to prospect because regardless of how the market looks, as long as you guys are prospecting, you are making progress. Fair. All right. So consider the benefits of an open houses. Number one is lead generation. Yes, you will get a lot of leads during your open houses. Um, this is, again, this is a really inexpensive way for you to generate leads, especially if you're new or you're just kind of in a slump and you don't know exactly what to do, host an open house. It costs you very, very little um, and you're going to be able to generate leads because people don't just come to open houses just to go to an open house. Like there has to be a motivation there. Even if their motivation is not to buy for another three years, there's some sort of motivation there. Okay. So what are the typical types of leads that we get at an open house? Who typically walks in? Neighbors. Neighbors. Neighbors, Neighbors walk in. And what kind of motivation might they have? Know the, the value of uh, their homes. Yeah. Sometimes we think, ah, it's just a nosy neighbor, but you know what? Nosy neighbors, they're being nosy because they're trying to figure out what's going on in the market because they're curious to know, they're, they're trying to figure things out by themselves, right? El Paso is a DIY city. Everyone wants to do it themselves. You guys know this. So they're trying to figure things out by themselves. And the first thing that they're going to do is, ah, uh -huh, the vecino selling. And I think their house is smaller than mine. Let's go see how much they have it up for sale for, you know? And then they walk in and what's the first thing they want to know? Y a cuánto? A cuánto se vende? Why? Because they just want to know, like, if their house is selling for this, how much is my house going to sell for? Okay? So don't dismiss a nosy neighbor. Nosy neighbors are usually there trying to collect information to decide whether they want to do something with their property or not rent it, sell it, move, don't move. They're trying to collect information. What other type of clients do we usually have walk in the door? Uh, 
Buyers? Buyers. We have active buyers that walk in the door. So typically the buyers that we get are either going to be active buyers that are already represented by a realtor, or we have um, buyers that are about to start the process or have, uh, have just started the process. Maybe they just got pre-qualified, um, but they're, they're in that very first step of like getting started. Those buyers right there, those are our little golden ticket. That's, that's the, the golden client that you want to make sure that you grab onto and hold on to. The vecinos too. You need to make sure that you're getting enough information from them to find out what they want. Um, but those buyers, those are the ones that I want to get started. I don't know what to do. I saw an open house. Me and my me and my husband, you know, we just got married. We want to buy a house. We've talked about it, but we have no idea what to do. There was this open house. We just wanted to come in and see. And usually what they want is information. They usually are walking in there to get information because they know somebody's going to be sitting there and that somebody's going to be able to at least point them in the right direction. Okay. Um, we also sometimes get some investor clients that walk in. Why do the investors walk in? They want to know, again, they're looking for information. So sometimes they just want to see like what's selling right now. What are the trends right now? Um, with each and every one of these clients, they're good leads. Now, even, even a client that's already represented, when they walk into the house, you have no idea what their previous experience with their realtor or the realtor that they've been working with is. Okay. And I'm not big on like stealing clients from other realtors. I really don't like to do that. But I am really big on giving 100% of my customer service, regardless of whether they're already represented or not. Because this has happened to me before. I can give a client that already has representation, great service, exceptional service. They're already represented. I know that they're, they're not going to be my client. They know that they're not going to be my client. But they're so impressed by me that they will still refer me clients over their other realtor. That, that has happened to me multiple times. So don't dismiss somebody just because they're represented. Just always do what you can do to give the best service that you can possibly give in that moment and allow it to be, and it'll come back to you. So this is the, the give, give and, and you will receive. That, that's basically what that is. Um, if done properly, there's a great use, there are great use of your time. Worst case scenario, you get lots of work or practice done. Right, so um, if you prepare for your open house correctly, it will be a good use of your time because you will have a group of motivated leads walking through the door and, and that's all you need to get started. You're gonna have people to talk to. Worst case scenario, you get practice in, okay? And there's a lot of things that you can practice while you're there. So make sure that you have that, the right attitude going in. Um, if you're doing an open house, do the open house with, with a good attitude. You know, you, you're, it's almost like you're hosting a mini, a mini get together, but instead of it being friends and family, it's a bunch of strangers and you have to make them feel super welcome. So it's a little awkward or it can be a little awkward, but you have to hype yourself up, hype yourself up about it. And this is where the preparation comes in. So we've talked about this. You have to plan and you have to prepare for that open house. Um, your preparation for an open house should start on Monday, okay? On Monday, you should know which open house you're going to do, which open house or open houses you're going to do, and you should be scheduling them. You should be scheduling them in the MLS. You should be double checking that that information has synced up with Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, and that your information is going on there, right? So Monday is, is just what day are we having the party, okay? We're having the open house on Saturday, from one to three, and then I'm gonna have another one on Sunday from one to three. Keep your open houses short. 
or that's my advice. I think different realtors have different perspectives on this. Um, I like to keep my open houses short. I think if you keep it to a two to three hour window, you have most of your clients come in during that time. Um, I like clients seeing other clients being there because it gives the, the look of, hey, I'm not the only person that's interested in this, right? So it, it might give them that motivation of um, moving on it a little bit quicker. Then from Tuesday through Thursday, it's preparation for you. This is when you should be teaming up with your lenders, team up with your title companies, team up with your credit repair. Let them know that you're gonna be doing an open house. How can they help you? What are some ways that, that your partners can help you if you're gonna reach out to them between Tuesday and Thursday? What are some things that they can offer you or that you can ask for? Lenders are your best friends during open houses, guys. Lenders will create marketing content for you. They'll help you um, with flyers. They'll help you promote your open house. Another thing that I love to get from my lenders is a breakdown of what the payment of the house would look like. So a lot of times you get a lead that walks in the door and what's one of the first things that they might ask you? They might ask you not just the price, but how much is this house gonna cost me monthly? How much would I have to give down as a down payment? Your lenders will be able to supply you with that information in a cute little pamphlet or flyer. I don't think I know one lender that doesn't do it. So. Talk to your lender and let them know, hey, I'm going to be doing an open house this weekend. This is the property. This is the asking price. Is there any way that you can help me get um, like information on what the payment's going to look like? Something that I can provide the clients as they walk in. And most all lenders will have that. So now you're preparing your material. What else might you want to get during the week in preparation for your open house? I love that you guys are taking notes, but I definitely want you guys to participate also. Mar marketing the property, like promoting. Mm -hmm. Market the property all week. All week you market the property. You market it on social media. You market it on Facebook Marketplace. You market it on Craigslist. I've used Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace um, for homes. I would say at home, $200,000 or below on Facebook Marketplace and on Craigslist, it, it'll generate some, some pretty good traffic for you. Um, it can even generate some leads for you online. Um, so yes, definitely promote it during the week. What else can we do to prepare during the week? We're still Tuesday through Thursday. What else are we doing Tuesday through Thursday? All we did on Monday was decide what house and what day. See how easy that was? We didn't do too much. Tuesday through Thursday, what else are we doing? Denise, do we all do we do we have to do a CMA? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's another one. Always do a CMA. Um, please don't ever do an open house without doing a CMA. So we're assuming that this is our listing, but what if it's not our listing? So if it's our listing, we've already done a CMA. We did the CMA when we got the listing presentation, but what if you're hosting an, an open house for somebody else? Do the CMA. You have to understand where this house falls into the market. You have to, you have to be able to go in and even though you're not gonna tell the client you know, right off the bat, like I think it's overpriced or underpriced or whatever, you need to understand that that home and that market as if you were the listing agent. That's why you're gonna prepare for it all week. If it's not your listing, there's a lot of catching up that you have to do. What else can we do? When we're doing the CMA, what would be another thing to look at? Door knocking. Active. Door knocking, Anaisa, said door knocking. Door knocking, definitely a good thing to do 
Um, I would probably wait until Thursday or Friday to do door knocking. That's going to be a little bit later in the week because we don't want to do it too, too early because we're inviting, we're inviting our neighbors to an event, right? I look at this as an event. If you like planning parties, you just look at it like planning a party because that's really what it is. It's an event. Okay. So door knocking Thursday, Friday, going back really quick to what Norma was saying, when you're doing your CMA, get a good understanding of the neighborhood and the area. If you have to drive it, drive it. Um, I'm a fan of Google Maps. I like to Google Map it and just walk the streets and kind of see what's going on there. Um, I like to know what schools are around there, what grocery stores are around there, um, corner stores, um, restaurants. I, in the moment that I do a CMA, um, and that I'm trying to learn the neighborhood, I pretend, put yourself in the, in the buyer's shoes, pretend like this is a possible home for you. What would make it so appealing? Well, if I'm looking at it as a prospective buyer, I think it's pretty cool that there's an elementary school at the next street. That means that I could walk the kids to school every morning and pick them up every morning and not have to drive there. That's really cool. Um, I think it's really cool that there's an Albertsons five minutes away. I think it's really cool that there's a Walmart five minutes away. I think it's really cool that there's a, a gas station 10 minutes away. Like I need to know and understand that area as if I was buying it because that's part of what you're going to showcase when you're showcasing the home. It's not just that home, it's that neighborhood also, okay? Um, so then, uh, Lorena, you were gonna say something also. I don't know if we covered it already. I forget about it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I always use, uh, put music and very good, um, what do you say? Desodorante uh, or olor? Yes. So buying your buying your supplies, right? Or preparing yeah. your supplies that you're gonna need for for that day. Um, air fresheners. Air fresheners. Um, snacks. If you're gonna have snacks, water bottles. If you're gonna have water bottles, we usually do the exact same snacks and water bottles for every open house. And it's those little um, individual baggies of like chips or check mix, checks mix or like those little individual baggies and then the small water bottles. I think that's very important right now due to COVID. I think it's super important that you guys don't put out um, like a plate of cookies where people are touching, especially the kids. Cause you know that, you know, maybe the adults, even if you put like the little utensils for them to grab, maybe the adults might do it, but the kids aren't gonna do it. Um, and so I think for the sake of us being professional and doing what we can to make sure that we're not spreading anything, do individually wrapped items, um, just, just so we're doing our part. You know what I mean? So do individually wrapped items, individual water bottles. Um, A frames. Enough. A frames. Make sure that you prepare your A frames. If you don't already have A frames and you're going to borrow A frames from somebody, make sure that you get all of that stuff situated um, between Tuesday and Thursday. Then Thursday, Friday are going to be your heavy promoting days. Heavy um, social media, social media, and door knocking. Okay, if you really want to have a bomb open house, you're going to door knock. Why? Because now you're, I mean, this is you going above and beyond. And that's what we do. We go above and beyond and we're the absolute best realtor in town. How do I know I'm the best realtor in town? Because I'm going to do for you what nobody else is going to do for you. I'm going to not just host open houses. I'm not just going to post a sign in front of your door. I'm going to personally invite your neighbors to the open house. Why? Because a lot of times it's a neighbor's friend or family member that we get as a buyer. So if I'm personally inviting neighbors and letting them know, hey, there's a house down the street. And I'm also going to tell them, oh, what do we usually say when we door knock? So we're inviting them to the open house. 
but we're also letting them know, hey, I'm going to have an event. So in case you see any, any cars, you know, driving down the street that you don't recognize, it's probably going to be for me and my event. My event's going to be from one to three. You might need to ask for additional parking. If you're familiar with the property and the property is kind of tight on parking and you know that people are going to be parking in front at the neighbor's house, it might be a good idea for you to say like, hey, you know, there's not a whole lot of parking there. I think people might end up, you know, parking in this area just out of convenience. Um, you know, would you mind? Is that going to be okay with you? I just don't want to inconvenience anything like anybody. So it's always a good idea just to keep that communication open. Um, but we're looking for sellers and we're looking for possible buyers. Okay. Now, if you really want to go above and beyond, you're going to do CMAs for 10 neighbors. Okay. You can do more, you can do less. But if you really want to go above and beyond, you'll do CMAs for 10 neighbors, okay? Just the neighbors that are right around your listing. And what you're going to do after you door knock and you've invited them, you're going to wait for them to show up. And when they show up, you're going to be like, oh, hey, Miss Flores, I'm so glad that you stopped by. Um, let me give you a tour of the house, X, Y, and Z. You guys are going to do your thing. And then you're going to say, oh, and by the way, I actually have a complimentary market analysis of your property here waiting for you. That's what's going to happen. Whether they are thinking about buying or selling, you will be their next realtor. Okay. You will be their next realtor. You will be their family realtor. You will be their friend realtor. You have exceeded all expectations. Okay. Because now they're like, oh, wow. Like I told them that I was going to come. And they prepared for me to come. That's another thing. Maybe you can just um, do CMAs for the people that say that they're going to come. Um, but let's say that you do the 10 CMAs for the neighbors. Not all 10 of them show up. You would actually door knock after and you would give them their CMA. Okay. This is when you're going like heavy, heavy, heavy. Like there's no excuses because when you go above and beyond, I guarantee you, even if they're not trying to buy or sell, you have made your presence known. You've made your presence so known and you have solidified your position as the best realtor for them to come to. So these are all ideas that you can use. You can use all of them. You can use some of them. But if you're serious about like, hey, I don't have any leads. I don't know what to do anymore. You know, I don't know what to say or what I'm doing wrong. I'm telling you, this is stuff that I've done before. So do it and, and you'll be you'll be surprised. It really does work, but it's work. It takes preparation. How long is it going to take for you to do 10 CMAs? It's going to take a little while. You know what I mean? It, it's work. So if you're willing to put in that work, you will see the reward at the end. Um, dress professionally, make sure that you guys know what you're going to wear the day of. Again, take into accountability what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be showing. If it's a ranch style home where it's a one acre lot and you want to you know, be walking around the lot to show them what all they can do with the backyard and you know, all of that good stuff, you might want to wear more comfortable shoes. Um, depending on the weather also. Oh, that's another thing. Make sure that you let your sellers know ahead of time that you're going to be hosting the open house. It's super duper duper important that the AC or the heater are on and working during your open house. Okay. This is huge. You don't want a client walking in the home and being so uncomfortable in that home because it's so cold or it's so hot that they're rushing out just because they don't want to be in the house anymore. So that's very important for you to make sure to get across to the seller or the listing agent. Um, so if you've never seen the listing before, it's a good idea for you to go and check out the listing ahead of time because these are the things that you're going to catch when you're there checking it out, like on Tuesday. If you're going to ask them to turn on the utilities and they don't even have utilities on, you need to do that early in the week or just ask the listing agent. Hey, just want to make sure that the utilities are on and working. OK. Um, now, how do you select your property? What time is it? 
Oh, we're at 1113. Okay, let's just finish this last slide because I told you guys I wasn't going to keep you past 11. We'll just finish this last slide and then we'll finish the rest of this next week or yeah, today's Thursday next week. Um, so selecting your property, guys, make sure that when you're selecting an open house, uh, an open house to to do, especially if it's not yours, look at the location. Don't pick anything that's too hidden. Ideally, you want something that's off of a main road or like two roads off of a main road. So um, if we're on the west side, I want something off of Wrestler. I want something off of Red. I want something off of West Wind. I want something off of Mesa, something off Donovan. Um, if I'm on the, I, I don't even want to speak on the east side because I feel like I'm going to mess it up, but you guys know what, <laughs> what the main roads are. <laughs> Try to get them off the main road. If it's your listing and you really don't have an option and the location's not the best, your next best option is make sure you have a lot of A-frames. So just because your, your listing is hidden doesn't mean that it can't be a successful open house. It can be, but just make sure that you have a lot of signage and a lot of balloons, okay? Condition, price, and terms. So that's why it's important for you guys to do the CMA. We want to make sure that we're not sitting at a home that's super duper overpriced. Um, in reality, a home that's overpriced, it's going to go stale on the market very quickly. It, it's, it already has its reputation. You typically want to look at, uh, you typically want to do an open house on newer listings. Okay, so if you have the option, go with a new listing. Make sure that the condition of it looks good. Again, if you're not familiar, familiar with the listing, I do recommend that you go and check it out ahead of time because you'll just catch things. Um, even for my own clients, sometimes they're like, oh, it's ready. And then I go and look at it and I'm like, um, there's dust, this much dust on the floor. I'm not going to sweep it up the day that I get there for the open house. I'm not even going to be, I'm not going to bring a broom with me. I'm, that's not even going to be on my radar. So make sure you go out there and check it out. Um, your own whenever possible. Right. So make sure that you're doing your own listings, uh, open houses whenever possible. Um, and then if you're unsure of like, how do I pick a, a listing? You always want to definitely do listing or open houses for listings from our office as much as possible also. So always look at our office first, if you absolutely have to, or if you have like a realtor friend, um, they work with, you know, a different company and they're asking for a favor, then yeah, it's appropriate to go with somebody else. But we typically want to stay within our brokerage. Okay. Um, questions before I leave you guys for the day? No? All right. So um, we'll get more into open houses um, and I'm so passionate about open houses, guys, just because I've seen how they work and they're so cheap. They're so cheap. Um, so we can't spend money until we make money. This is a really great option for anybody that's looking for leads and we're balling on a budget. Okay. Balling on a budget, open house it for sure. Open house and social media. I'm trying to save you guys money. That's why I push these two so much because they're the cheapest way to go and they will make, they will generate you money. Okay. Um, please, if you haven't already, I'm sure you haven't, cause you guys have been on this training, send your headshots to Angela. She emailed you the link, send her the headshot that's all you need so that now whenever you send that link out to your client, you guys have a co-branded application. Super duper cool tool. I would love to hear how it works for you guys. If you guys have any um, clients that use it anytime soon, please get back to us with feedback on it. Um, and other than that, I will talk to you guys on Monday. Go out and make a lot of money. Prospect, prospect, prospect. It's the weekend. Even if you're not showing homes, go out and check out the inventory. Put out some videos on your social media. Enjoy your family. Make sure you get your you time on Sunday and come back refreshed and energized on Monday. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Denise. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to call you in a bit. Okay, Alberto?
Okay. All right. Can you say cheese? I can. Let me just close this out. <laughs> where is it? Hold on. Oh my Alvaro and Michelle are laughing at me. I don't see where it's at. <laughs> it's like stuck. Hold on. It's the Coke. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>